Hey everyone, today we'll talk about out of band application security testing, also called OAST for short. To better understand this, let's go through this hypothetical scenario. You are a security researcher who's tasked with hacking a target website. After careful analysis, you identify vulnerabilities in the target. In order to exploit them, you send it a malicious payload. Since the target is in fact vulnerable, your exploit works and the target responds with sensitive information. Being an ethical hacker that you are, you inform the stakeholders about this issue. However, instead of fixing the vulnerability, they apply an infrastructure patch in such a way that when you send it a malicious payload, you get a normal response. Since the target is still vulnerable, the challenge here is to perform exploitation. So in order to do that, you need to introduce an external service. This could either be a managed endpoint provided by a third party or your own server that could handle incoming requests. Once in place, you can now send a maliciously crafted payload which will force the target to send sensitive information to your external endpoint even though you get a normal response to your original request. The request to this external endpoint can be DNS, HTTP or SMTP. Since you do not get the output of the vulnerability in the direct response to the vulnerable request, these vulnerabilities are called blind vulnerabilities and can range from SQL injections to cross-site scripting. This way of testing blind vulnerabilities using external servers is called out-of-band application security testing. So now you know what OAST is, but how would you create your own external out-of-band endpoint? You can of course buy your own infrastructure and set up everything from scratch, but it would be too tedious and time consuming. Therefore, penetration testers prefer a managed out-of-band service that can provide you with an endpoint for out-of-band exploitation. The most famous among these is Burp Collaborator. However, it comes only with the paid versions of Burp Suite. Therefore, in this video, I'll tell you some free alternatives that you can use while performing out-of-band application security testing. The first one that we'll talk about is pingb.in. When you'll access the website, you'll see a specific token. It also shows a number of ways in which you can use that token in order to do your OAST. Let's use these examples and see how it works. I have copied the curl command and now when I paste it on my console, it would send an HTTP GET to our endpoint. Similarly, I can do an HTTP POST by explicitly specifying it in my curl command and you can see the response on our endpoint. I can also use the ping payload that would receive an ICMP request or use dig or NSLOOKUP which would confirm that pingb can also receive DNS requests. The examples on the pingb also include an out of band XXE payload that you could use to test blind XXE vulnerabilities. The next one that we'll talk about is webhook.site. Once you visit the website, you will see that you get a unique URL and a unique email address that you can also use in your payloads. Webhook.site works on HTTP requests and email addresses. So if I copy the unique URL and do an HTTP GET using curl, I would get that request on my Webhook.site. Let me show you this again by simply visiting it in my browser. And you see I get another HTTP GET with all the details. What I can also do is I can change the request from GET to POST. So let me quickly edit it. And now I can add my custom headers and custom request body. Once I do that, I could simply change the GET to POST. And as soon as I'll send it, you'll see that I have received that request on my webhook.site page. You can also see all the details that I put in my request headers and body. Now webhook has both free and paid tiers. In the free tier, you can also configure the etc redirect, content type and your HTTP method. You can also add course header and further modify your payload. The third entry here is accessorshunter.com. Now I haven't used Accessors Hunter in a while, but basically 
you register on this website and choose a unique subdomain. Once you log in, you will find various payloads with your custom subdomain. Then you can either use the provided payload or your custom payload with your subdomain. And every time it's triggered, the request would be sent to XSS Hunter and you can see all the details. Fourth on the list is transfer.bi.tk. It's really helpful when you want to copy a file from your target machine to exfiltrate sensitive information. As you can see on the website, there are various ways of doing this. Let me quickly show you how you can do it with curl. Let me create a simple text file. So I'm going to create a simple text file with a secret in it. And now as mentioned on the website, I could simply use curl hyphen hyphen upload file with my file name and send it to transfer.pi.tk. Once done, you can see the URL where you can access your file. So I'm going to simply copy it and paste it in my browser. And as you can see, my secret.txt is successfully downloaded and it has the same information that I added while uploading it. Fifth on the list is Canary Tokens. It's an incredibly free service that provides a wide variety of options. You can choose from a URL or DNS token to AWS keys to a Word document via Guard VPN config, PDF or an SQL server. Basically any attack vector that you can think of is available at Canary Tokens. Once you select an option, you can provide your email address and a custom message. Anytime your specified document is uploaded or token is used, you will get an email in case the target is vulnerable. I use it extensively when I need to do a perimeter check or create a list of attack vectors for an organization. Next on our list is this awesome repository. If you have your own domain and a private server with static IP address, you can simply clone this repository and follow the steps mentioned in the readme and create your own private out of bound server. I have actually created an entire video detailing the process step by step that you can find here. So in case you want to learn how to do it yourself, you can simply click the info card and go to that video. And last but not the least, we have interact as such from project discovery. This is my favorite tool out of the seven. In my opinion, it's the best open source tool for detecting out of band interactions. It has a wide variety of features, supports HTTP, SMTP, LDAP, as well as DNS interactions, has a CLI, has a web, has a burp add-on, as well as a zap add-on, supports AES encryption with zero login, and even has a notification feature. Honestly, I can make an entire video about Interact as such. But for the purpose of this video, we'll just focus on the web client and see how we can use Interact as such to exfiltrate out of band requests. So let me quickly open the Interact as such web client. And now as you can see the web client is open and we have this custom URL. By clicking there I have copied it. So let me paste it and now I can use this URL in my payloads to send data and that data will go to this specific Interact as such web client. So let's test it. Let me quickly curl it. And as soon as I curl it, you can clearly see that the web client has received DNS and HTTP requests. If I click on them, I can see all the details, including a timestamp, which would tell me which exactly is this request. So there you have it, an overview of out of band application security testing and the free tools that you can use in order to perform it. I hope you got to learn something new from this video. And since there is already a request, I will make another video just for Interact as such, but that would be specific to OWASP Zap and its add-on only. If you want me to make with Burp Suite, then please let me know and I'll try to include it in the same video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.